The reading is taken from Psalm 24, which is on page 513 of the Church Bibles. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who doesn't trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had, not, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we hear this amazing story of Jesus bringing life out of death, so we pray that your words would speak to whatever situations we find ourselves in and bring life. Amen. So it's the fifth Sunday of the month. What does that mean? Well, it means we're going to do something slightly different because there's normally four Sundays in the month, so we can do something a bit different. By which point, I'd like you to do a little bit of interactivity this morning. So we're going to be talking to one another. As I mentioned, it's All Saints Day. But what is a saint? Now, there's an easy answer to that. Of course, there is. But it would be good to go a little bit deeper about what a saint is what or who is a saint? So maybe if you could turn to the person or persons next to you and say, what do you think? Who or what is a saint? And if you're at home, you might like to at this point, you can type some things in the comments or have a think yourself and then put up something. What or who is a saint?
So what's our consensus, indeed? If we have a consensus, oh, gracious, that hand was very quick up. Yes, Sarah, what do you think? A good person. Thank you. Okay, wondering any other ideas? What's a saint? What or who is a saint other than a good person? Diana, yes. A holy person. A believer, sorry. Masks make it very tricky to hear sometimes, don't they? A believer, so someone who believes in, in Jesus. Okay, I thought it, would, it probably bore it. It was probably good to say. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we've got a good person, a believer in Jesus. Anything else? Yes, Sue. So. Someone who died for their faith who was a martyr. Okay, thank you. So and people that endure thing without any complaint. Do, do endure things without any complaint. Right, well, I'm leaving right now then. <laughs> <laughs> that's a high threshold, gracious. Goodness gracious. I, that, that's it. Right, I see. I wonder, do you think they did complain? Hmm. Do you know anyone that doesn't complain? <laughs> I don't know anyone that doesn't complain. Maybe they, maybe they complained in quiet and secret. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. Any other ideas? A, go, a person that goes above and beyond. Okay, thank you. Any other ideas? Put others before themselves. Thank you. That reminds me of the Brownie Guide law, that does. The Brownie Guide does, what was it? Puts her, others before herself and does a good turn every day or something along those lines, wasn't it? Yes. Julian. Someone who's part of the church. Part of the church. Okay. Lots of different ideas, aren't there, there? So from the, lots of us could maybe fall into some of those categories, and some of us, well, actually, all of us sitting here couldn't fall into Sue's category, could we? Because we're all still alive. <laughs> but we have different ideas of what constitutes a saint. Saint. So can we all be saints? No? Yes? Hmm. Yes? Hmm. Well, let's look at some of those answers. A good person? A believer in Jesus? Someone who's <laughs> dead, I said, that's tricky. Someone who doesn't complain? Oh, this is getting even more tricky now, isn't it? A good person who puts... Sorry, am I wandering forward too far? Um, a person that puts others before themselves? What do you think? Well, I think it's striking in the Bible where it mentions saints. I don't know if you've ever known, noticed this. I, I know I've said it before. That it's always used, I think always, anyway, in plural. So we talk about the saints. In fact, we've had, I think, one of our passages from Ephesians mentions all the saints. It tends to be in the plural. And I wonder what that says. Any idea? What do you think that... What, what, uh, what do you think that difference that means? As opposed to talking about St. Catherine or St. Paul, we talk about all the saints. What difference do you think that makes? It could be anyone, someone anywhere. Thank you. What was Liz going to say? Yeah, okay. Thank you. So not necessarily one outstanding person, but because of what God has done for us. And generally speaking, in the Bible, yes, when it talks about the saints, it talks about... People like you and me. St. Brian. <laughs> or oh, St. Janice. Delighted to meet you. <laughs> but you get my point. So I wonder what we would need to change about our definition. The psalm that Diana read to us earlier, Psalm 24, talks a lot there about who is qualified to come into God's presence. And to my mind, that's a bit like a saint. There's similarities, aren't there? Who do you think is qualified to come into God's presence? We're going to look at the passage in a minute. But again, turn to the person next to you. Who do you think is qualified to come into God's presence? Don't look worried, it's okay. <laughs> There aren't necessarily right or wrong answers here. <clears throat> I think the discussion was a bit shorter then, partly because, as Linda said to me, well, the answer's anyone, isn't it? 
But the rest of you were talking for rather longer than anyone, so I can I sense there were some different answers there. Anyone would like to share with us what they think you know, an answer to this question might be? Jim? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> no one. Oh, okay. Everyone, no one. Thank you for different answers. Zach, you're, yes. Oh, I'll come to you in a sec. You don't need to ask. You just need to believe in him. Thank you. And uh, Joyce was going to say something too? Okay. So Joyce is using the example of the thief who was on the cross next to Jesus when he was crucified, that those who repent and believe, like, the, like he did, you know, when Jesus turns to him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. Well, that's some different answers, isn't it? I mean, we could look at it. Who can come, who's qualified to come into God's presence? Sometimes I think, a little bit like in life, we think that there has to be some sort of initiation right. So going back to the brownies, I was going to say, which of you here were brownies? But of course, probably, you know, little less than half of you couldn't have been a brownie. But when I was a brownie, um, when we uh, signed up and we, we made our promise, we had to go and tiptoe around the toadstool. Did anybody else have to do that? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, goodness, that takes me back. I don't think they do that now. If Anne was here, I'd ask her. Um, but uh, there are different groups, aren't there, that have different sort of initiation things. So who, who's qualified to become part of an organization? And some of them aren't very nice, are they? If you think about, yes, we we'll probably won't go there. But certainly some gangs have really quite horrendous initiation rights, don't they? How about the church? Well, yes, we do, in a sense, have an initiation right, don't we? It's called baptism. And confirmation in the Church of England, absolutely. But I think baptism, sorry? The catechism. Well, coming on to that, you're getting on to my second point. Easy, easy. <laughs> but yes, so the act of baptism, in a like, is coming into the presence of God. However, what about those who are not baptised? And then, yes, John, absolutely. Some churches and some organisations require you, don't they, to sign up to a statement of belief. Have any of you ever been a part of a church which required you to be a member? You had to sign up to what you believed. Anyone been part of that? Yeah. It still, yeah, that still happens, doesn't it? So you can have quite tight boundaries of who could come into God's presence. Oh, you're going to share something, yes? Okay. Thank you. He's determined to preach my sermon before I go there, isn't he? <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> yes. And then I think about Jesus. And we think, who was allowed into Jesus' presence? Or rather, who wasn't allowed? No one. So a third approach to answering that question might be, and here, <laughs> I'm obviously, how many days till Christmas is it, Ruth? You told me yesterday. 55, thank you. <laughs> I guess a third approach to answering that question might be how we behave. So a little bit like Father Christmas weighing up, naughty, nice, and actually, when you look at the psalm, those who have clean hands and a pure heart might suggest that it's something to do with that. And yet, I wonder really if it's the intention behind those things that is actually more important than actually how we behave. Or could it be both? So what do you think? Who is qualified to come into God's presence? And as I come to think about all saints and who we are, I wonder how those things tie in, that sense of initiation, that sense of signing up to a set of beliefs, 
or our sense of how we behave or how we intend to behave. I wonder how that ties in with our definition of who saints are. And where does that leave us on this stewardship Sunday? If it's not God being like Father Christmas, weighing up our behaviour, I simply hope that it isn't. I don't believe that it is. Goodness, that wouldn't be a very nice picture, would it? Maybe the picture is instead, as we come into God's presence, and actually I guess that ties in with what you were saying, Mark, that no one, in a sense, is uh, qualified to come into God's presence. We come and we simply bask. Not the right day for basking, is it? But we bask in that love and acceptance. And then that inspires us to act differently. I guess it's going back, isn't it, to that theme of the second week when Julian preached on the second chapter of Ephesians, of saying that all that we do, if you like, is response to grace. We love because he first loved us. And it's about, how did you put it again? Believing in what Jesus has done. But where does that leave our behaviour then? Our clean hands and pure heart. Well, sometimes I think we just get it the wrong way round, don't we? That we think we've got to be behave right to be accepted. Whereas I think what this is saying is, again... And I don't want to apologise for coming back to one of the basic building blocks of our faith, because it's so important, isn't it? That we can be saints, we can come into the presence of God, not because of what we do, but because of who Jesus is and how much God loves us. And that everything we do is a response, isn't it, to that, to knowing that we are loved, to knowing that we are chosen, to knowing that we are called, to knowing that we are given gifts. What gifts do you have? But knowing and seeing those, we then, well, I guess it's a little bit like, can you think back to a time in your life when you've been so moved, you want to instinctively respond? That something has spoken to you so deeply that you just can't help yourself but say, I'm going to do that, I want to do that, I want to give this money. Do you know, the, 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 the thing that came to mind is those stories that I see on children in need every year. That must be coming up soon. When is it? A couple of weeks away? You see that and you're so moved, you want to respond. And I wonder if the way that we can see stewardship as giving back to God, is just knowing how loved we are, knowing how much God has given us, that we long to respond, rather than seeing it as, if I don't do it like this, then God won't love me. I know we love, I, we do, but then that's, I think, what we sometimes think, isn't it? You know, unless I do this, then God won't love me. And really, it is the other way around. So to go back to that first question, what or who is a saint? I wonder if you would answer that differently. Or what was the next one? How can we all be saints? Maybe it's nothing about what we do and everything about what God has done and is doing is calling us to know and to respond to. Amen.